So there's an update into the investigation into the death of three-year-old Braylon Noble, although it's still ongoing. But today, the Toledo Police Department made a public search executed at the home of his mother and grandmother. And just to remind you, Braylon went missing September 4th from his home located at Hunter Ridge Apartments and was found days later in the swimming pool. So what I want to do is I'm going to let you hear the information because now this is considered a homicide. Toledo swimming pool. The case of Braylon Noble ongoing now. He went missing in September 4th from his home located at Hunters Ridge Apartments. As 13 ABC's Alexis Means reports tonight, police searched the grandmother's Jeep. The search warrant allowed Toledo police to look for evidence in the case of Braylon Noble. The warrant covers all elements of a homicide investigation. According to the filing on September 4th, detectives searched the apartment occupied by Braylon's mother, Dejanae Cox, and his grandmother, Bobby Johnson. Police searched everything on the property, including a black 2012 Jeep Liberty registered to the grandmother. Detectives also confiscated a cigarette butt and a chair on the balcony an Amazon tablet found on the entertainment center in the living room, a Samsung tablet located on the stereo in the living room, two cell phones on top of a microwave in the kitchen, a Samsung cell phone on the bathroom sink, a ZTE cell phone, and an HTC cell phone located in a medicine cabinet in the bathroom, a claw hammer, another cell phone on the kitchen table, and a box of Glad Force Flex trash bags. The warrant also lists the facts of the case. The toddler was missing a Approximately 30 minutes before 911 was called, Dejanae Cox told police she lives in the apartment with her mother. She claimed the last time she saw her son, he was in the apartment with her mother. Cox told detectives when she came back into the apartment from her balcony, her mother told her that Braylon went into his room and shut the door. She told police she went into her son's room, but he was not there. They told investigators they looked outside the apartment and in the pool and creek. Toledo police detectives are not commenting on the case. Investigators say when there's new information, they'll release it. In Toledo, Alexis Means, 13 ABC Action News. Anyone could have seen his body floating at any time. Jesus, that's the baby, yo. This is what they want us to believe, that, that Braylon was found in the pool days later, going unnoticed, unrecognized by so many people who were looking. What mystifies me in this is how were they able to get him back into the pool? What they saying is in the whole pool was in no water in the pool. Is it that he ended up in the pool when it was empty and so many times being searched? While you're keeping it closed, this is the width to enter after the gate is unlocked. This was placed on after the first search by the firefighters and the search team. Then there is multiple stairs to walk down. After seeing how the pool area is locked and the stairs, I think, how is it possible for the baby who has now fallen three stories from a window, potentially injured, to be able to walk over there, slide in maybe perhaps, or enter that pool and go down all those stairs, as I said, potentially injured, which I would think he would be falling from a window of that height and him being that small. There is no trauma to him externally 
or internally, according to the autopsy report, this is the window that he fell out and the height that he fell from. This is a claw hammer, a very common household tool that most people will have in their house. However, what I want you to notice that a claw hammer during the search warrant was confiscated. And now I want to bring up some information that I got from the neighbors and various other things and discuss the window rule that most people will have in their house. However, what I want you to notice that a claw hammer during the search warrant was confiscated. And now I want to bring up some information that I got from the neighbors and various other things and discuss the window. This is the window that Braylon opened up and fell out. However, I want to zoom in and show you some things. There are bolts placed on these windows. There's one here. There is one here. And there's the screen, as you can see, going inwards. and going straight down. It is on a lip, which means the screen has to go and insert in a ridge in order to lift it up and pull it this way. There's also a piece that is broken off here that could be from the trap. Here's the claw hammer. There's the point that could possibly get what I have found out is the bolt off of this window here. It is only bolted on. And for Braylon, to be able to do that with his disabilities, I would say, especially with his hands, would be next to impossible to hold a hammer and be able to get those bolts out. Get that screen up over the lid and wiggle and jiggle without making any noise or attracting anybody. Not falling off these boxes if that's where he climbed up. This was manhandled. And I believe that the investigators probably noticed that on that bolt, which would have been pretty rusty by now, might have had some little scratches or marks on it which could have been caused by that hammer. When I called the office, I want you to hear what they had to say about the windows. And, uh, you're with uh, the safety locks on them, so you can only open them for s a little bit? Or that you will put it in, so that way a child can't open it, or if you want to round up with someone from outside, then you open your door. Okay. The T-bar to put into it to make so that it can't open, but it has a lock on it, and then you can, if you're, some units come with them, some don't, so. Um, As you heard her say, it is impossible for the windows to open, and a child to fall out. That's because there's bolts there. Like I showed you, it's hard to see in the picture. What you can do for extra precaution is use a safety bar that goes across so the main windows will
will not open up at all. You can place in the bottom or you can place in the top and they lock in. This also prevents if you're on a lower floor for somebody to potentially break into your house. However, I decided to call back my source and discuss this window. As you can see, there is a metal triangular part on the window. These are the safety bars on her window. But what is missing is the left portion of that window. So that was removed. And that's probably what a lot of people were talking about being so suspect. Because those two windows go across, they slide open, and they still would have the bars on the window. It wouldn't open to just seeing the screen because of the way they move. You can also get them for your sliding patio doors too. So to me, I think that they can understand through all of the evidence that we have heard in regards to him falling out of a window at being with disabilities and motor skills, not getting injured at all, walking away for days on end while it rained, he'd be cold, he'd be scared, he'd be wet, he'd be hungry, he'd be wanting his mummy, his diaper would be filled with poop and pee and dirty. I don't think he would hide at all. And the autopsy report, although it's not completed, we were all waiting to find out if he actually did drown. He had some signs of marbling. Some people speculate he could have also been in a tub, maybe perhaps placed in a freezer. Remember the Malaya Davis case, they found skin in the bathtub, in the drains. So all in all, I think that autopsy report, we may find out that it was not a cause of drowning. It could have been a cause of drowning. But with all of this information, they are now investigating this as a homicide. This doesn't surprise me at all. From the gate, I knew something was wrong. From the phone calls, to the discrepancies, to the truths through falsehoods, through the behavior and mannerisms of the mother, so now we wait for the next portion of what they're going to say in regards to this in the reasons that they may think it's homicide and maybe even a potential arrest. But I've got my boots on the ground. I'm keeping my ears open. And if I have to make phone calls to my sources, I will. So let's see what happens next to this case. And justice will be served for Braylon Noble. Thank you for watching. Place your comments and thoughts below. That's the dish for today. Have a great day. Thank you.